was another big week of SmackDown and another big week for the Bloodline story. So let's take a look at everything that happened on the June 16th edition of SmackDown and where it could all be heading to next. So, as expected, the closing days of May and the entire month of June has been dedicated to the absolute collapse of the Bloodline and the entire empire that Roman Reign has built with his family members. Roman was a strict and ruthless leader ever since the early days of the Bloodline. That element of his character has always been there since 2020. It was clear as day, all the manipulation and the mind games he was placing on his family members were just so that he could stay loyal to him and keep him on top. Roman has always advertised the Bloodline as being a family operation and how they were all fighting to keep their family name on top of WWE. But as you look deeper between the lines and past Roman's manipulative ways, you can see that in actuality, the Bloodline was more about just keeping Roman Reigns himself on top of WWE by using his family members and brainwashing them. Now, to the audience, that's been clear pretty much since the very start. It was obvious what Roman was doing. But to his family members and the characters within the storyline, they didn't really pick up on what was happening for a while, especially when the Usos had their titles. Solo Sokoa had his title, everything just seemed perfect to them, and they weren't really thinking much of it because everyone had gold. Everyone seemed to be succeeding. Everything seemed equal. So it was as if the titles were a band-aid to this bigger issue that was going on within the bloodline. And once the band-aid was ripped off and the Usos lost their undisputed tag team titles, that's basically when the Civil War arc started. And when the Usos slowly started to come aware about what was happening and wake up to the truth, Roman didn't want to even see their faces after they lost at WrestleMania. And despite everything that they accomplished together over the last few years and everything that the Usos helped Roman with, he was still keeping them on a very short leash after WrestleMania 39. And like we saw several times during the immediate weeks that followed WrestleMania 39, Roman was making secret plans with Heyman and Solo to attack the Usos if they don't get certain tasks done. And it all goes back to Roman truly being just mad and insane with power. And like we discussed before, it appears that the longer Roman Reigns stays champion, the more insane and driven with power he becomes. So Roman isn't even the same person he was back in 2020 and 2021. This current version of Roman Reigns is more mad and crazy than ever before. So it's basically this same greed and insanity that made Roman Reigns lose Jimmy and Jay from the bloodline. Despite everything that was going on between Roman and the Usos, Jimmy and Jay still came out at Night of Champions with good intentions of helping Roman and Solo win the tag team titles. But Roman still wasn't appreciative and started pushing and shoving Jimmy and Jay around, which led to Jimmy finally having enough and turning on Roman Reigns. A lot of fans are bringing up how Roman was betrayed by those closest to him now four times in his career. Seth Rollins, Sami Zayn, Jimmy Uso, and most recently Jay Uso. And three out of four of those betrayals were caused by Roman himself. So it's hard to feel bad for this character because he brought it on himself when you look at the bigger picture. But Roman may spin the narrative over the next few weeks to be the victim and talk about he can't trust his own family members. So let's get back to the June 16th edition of SmackDown that was focused around Jay's decision. We see Roman and Heyman talking backstage and Roman sends him out to go talk to Jay. Heyman tries his best to convince Jay to pick the bloodline side, but Jay repeats what he's been saying over the last few weeks. He's saying that the only way he's staying is if Paul Heyman leaves first. Jay then comes across Sami Zayn backstage and they didn't even speak a word to each other, mostly because they didn't have to. Sami Zayn has been offering Jay Uso advice on how to handle this situation with Roman Reigns for months now, so Sami knew everything was already in Jay's head. That's why he just gave him that slight nod, just as a little reminder to remember everything he told him over the last few months. Just one last way to try and get Jay to do the right thing. We then get to the segment and Jay opens up by once again offering the same proposal. Jay tells Roman that he's got a pick between him and Paul Heyman. Roman says that Paul Heyman isn't going anywhere because that's his special counsel. Roman says that when Jay is the tribal chief, he can remove Heyman 
and get his own special counsel, but how Heyman wasn't going anywhere in current day. Roman then turns on his manipulation switch and talks about how the past three years have all been about grooming Jey Uso to be the next tribal chief, which everyone knows is a big lie. Roman points out the fan reaction for the Usos and says that the fans weren't chanting for them like this 10 years ago. He points out how it even took the Usos 10 years to even make it to WrestleMania, and how ever since they've been with him, the Usos have been highly featured in main eventing WrestleMania. Roman and Heyman then turn to their last resort option to recruit Jay back to their side. They mentioned that when Roman made Jay his right-hand man, it was Jimmy who spoke out first and was against it. They used this tactic in attempt to get Jay to turn on his brother for doubting him like that. Jimmy even admits that it was true, and Jay goes along with it for a while, making it seem like he bought what Roman and Heyman were selling. But at the very last second of his promo, Jay then says he's out too, and kicks Roman Reigns. The Usos finally reunite, kick Solo Sokoa, and then give Roman Reigns a second kick to close out the show. The crowd was even chanting, you deserve it, at Roman Reigns after SmackDown went off air. And everyone's speculation is confirmed. It'll be the Usos versus Roman and Solo at Money in the Bank. WWE is even officially labeling it as the Bloodline Civil War. It's the third premium live event in a row where Roman Reigns doesn't defend his undisputed title. So some fans are a bit bothered by that, but SummerSlam appears to be the date and time for Roman's next premium live event title defense. But obviously, the Bloodline Civil War tag team match is probably the biggest non-title tag team match that WWE has seen in quite some time. It's a tag team match that's three years in the making, and even though there's no title on the line, it still feels like there's heavy stakes in this match. Do they try to beat down either Jimmy or Jay and try to get them to fall back in line by force? That's a possibility. But if the Usos win, what exactly will be Roman's reaction and how will he handle that? Roman already went through three betrayals from Bloodline members in 2023 alone. So taking that fact into consideration, Roman has every right to be extremely paranoid with the last remaining Bloodline member, Solo Sokoa. Outside of taking his brother's side for a few months on SmackDown a few weeks ago, Solo Sokoa has been nothing but loyal to Roman Reigns. But due to the recent events of getting unexpectedly attacked by Sammy, Jimmy, and Jay, it does make you wonder if Roman will be highly suspicious now of Solo Sokoa, even if Solo is truly innocent and not up to anything. Will Roman just be paranoid now because of the kind of year he had so far with everyone leaving him? Will Roman even try to break that cycle by striking first on Solo Sokoa prematurely when he really lets his paranoia get to his head? That's a route to go into too. The way Roman's character has been written and this trajectory and arc that he's on right now, it seems like the only real ending for him is for Roman to just end up all alone in the end. A man that once had it all, one of the most dominant factions in history, a legendary special counsel, all the titles in the world, all the way down to losing everything and having no one by his side. That's why Solo Sokoa may be by Roman's side right now, but telling by the flow of the story, Solo Sokoa will also be gone from Roman's side sometime in the future. But what are your thoughts on today's stories? Leave your comments below. Don't forget to subscribe with all notifications on and leave a like if you enjoyed. Thanks for watching, guys.